Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us for our afternoon uh, Facebook Live program. Um, this is Trisha again from the Living Museum Aquarium Curator, and what we're looking at is our summer flounder exhibit. Um, so I'm going to kind of step back and show you guys the exhibit from a hole. And what it's supposed to be is three different colors of sand. Uh, unfortunately, the flounder as they are adults like to um, fluff the sand and mix it all up but you can kind of see where there'd be three sections I don't know if you guys can see from back here how many flounder do you see um, so we'll kind of zoom in closer and get you guys a good look at them so here's another one of our flounder now what we have in here uh, at this time of year is summer flounder that is your popular bay flounder species uh, in the area. Um, they are what's referred to as a left eye flounder, for those of you who don't know, and it's uh, uh, pretty interesting actually. Flounder species are um, split by left eye versus right eye flounder. And what that means is, is if you were to catch a flounder and hold it up uh, with the mouth facing away from you, um, kind of like this guy is here and if the eyes are on the left side that means you have a left eye flounder and if they're on the right side then you have a right eyed species flounder so summer flounder are left eyed species uh, they get pretty large um, you know people catch them in around uh, five pounds or so which is really huge actually for a flatfish um, and we're gonna go ahead and feed them. I'm gonna have Jordan in the back feed them so we can see what's going on. As you can see, they're starting to move. Maybe they know what's gonna happen. So actually our flounder get uh, really excited all the time um, whenever feeding. Um, what they do is for those of you who don't know they only have pigment on their top side and their bottom side is completely white let's see if we can see that from the bottom here as they fly or look like flying <laughs> so if you guys have any questions feel free to ask but uh, for right now, we're just going to watch our flounder feeding. It's really fun. This is one of my favorite exhibits to feed, actually, because they get so excitable. So these guys, flounder are really flat, actually. Um, for those of you who've ever seen The Little Mermaid, um, it's not like that big fat guppy that is her friend. Uh, his name is Flounder, but it's kind of the opposite. Flounder are very flat. They're only colored on one side and they have both eyes on the one side of their body um, so that they can kind of do this. They can uh, blend in with the sand, cover themselves up. They are what's called ambush predators. Uh, as you can see from the feeding, um, they will wait for food to swim by and then really quickly grab it with their mouth. They have really interesting curved teeth uh, that are really sharp and pointy so that they can grab hold of their prey and not let go. So I see I already have a question. Tyler would like to know what are they eating? That's a great question. Right now Jordan is feeding them chunks of uh, fish called capelin and we also have some squid cut up. And then I think there's some shrimp in there as well. Um, and so as you can see how they've all kind of changed colors, they're really great at camouflaging uh, and they can change their color to fit in with the substrate of the bottom. There's a really interesting video online of a peacock flounder trying to um, mimic a checkerboard that's underneath it. And if you haven't seen that, it's really interesting. Do they typically just lay flat on the bottom? Is that their defense mechanism? Uh, Taylor, yes, that is all they do. Uh, <laughs> flounder just lay on the bottom and when they swim, they kind of just kind of scoot along the bottom. They don't really go very far, um, but they're really cool. They just kind of lay there uh, and then they ambush whatever prey they have uh, that swims by. How did they become flat? 
That is a evolutionary question that I'm not really prepared to answer. Um, however, I can tell you that when they are larval fish, they actually look like a normal fish. They have eyes on both sides. They're like a tiny round little baby fish. Uh, and then they go through a metamorphosis that um, makes their eyes move to the one side of their head. Um, so you can see here, they've got both eyes on one side, their mouth, their gills are actually on both sides. And we have uh, their dorsal fin runs all along their backside. guys have any more questions feel free to uh pipe in i've got one now from lomont what is the water temperature uh the water temperature here is actually just ambient um so i would guess it's about 72 to 75 degrees uh we don't have a, a heater or anything because these guys are native to the area so they would get used to uh ambient temperatures do they change color? That's a great question, Courtney. Um, they do change color. They change their pattern. Um, they have a lot of uh, pigment cells on the top of their body so that they can change um, to match the substrate on the bottom. And they also get a little more fired up, um, as you can see, like that guy, uh, when they're feeding or excited. Um, Aiden is asking, so they live in salt water. That is correct. This is a salt water exhibit. These guys are uh, popular to the Bay Area. We catch them actually as young of the year, uh, right around April and May. Uh, and so every year we change the flounder in this exhibit. We will release all of them in here, probably this year and catch a bunch of really, really small ones. What do you do with flounder when they outgrow the exhibit? Well, Scott, uh, like I just mentioned, we release them. Um, I try not to keep too many too large in this exhibit. Uh, they can get pretty big. And as you can see, they kind of mess up the sand and you can't really uh, tell what's going on here. It just kind of looks like a dirty exhibit, but it is supposed to be three different color sands and they're supposed to blend in with each side. Um, so this side is supposed to be really white sand that we can get from uh, Willoughby Spit or even at Yorktown Beach. This is kind of your redder, browner sand um, that we get from elsewhere, probably up at uh, Croker Landing. And then this side is uh, black sand that we actually get from the, um, the James River. So Dennis, you're asking about uh, having problems getting debris in their gills. No, the majority of their gill is on the top there, but there is a gill opening on the bottom. And I think that's just for when they're uh, feeding or swimming actively, uh, which they don't do very often. But otherwise, when they're lying on the bottom, it stays pretty shut and they can actually spit not necessarily spit, but spit um, de extra debris and sand out of their gills uh, really well. Jillian would like to know if they lay eggs. They do, actually. They will broadcast a lot of eggs all at once. I don't know how many, but it's several hundred thousand eggs at a time. <laughs> Alex wants to know if they are all family. Uh, I couldn't tell you if they're all from the same mother and father, but they might as well be family since they've been living in this exhibit together uh, for about a year and a half now. So it's their due time to kind of be free and let's switch it up. So uh, I've got a question from David asking if they are a community fish and how well they do with other fish and what fish naturally and in captivity? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, so they're not exactly like a schooling fish, if that's what you're asking. Um, they don't necessarily school together like say uh, the permit and spade fish do, um, but they are kind of living harmoniously in here um, now, if I had more or if there was one that was significantly larger than the other, um, then we would probably have some problems. They kind of start attacking each other's spaces and whatnot. But uh, so far, these are all at a good size to be together. And um, 
and I don't really, we've never really had them with other fish, but I know I've seen them in the aquariums uh, with other fishes present. So I think it's as long as it's something that's not a bottom feeder, that's not going to um, mess with them in the sand too much, then I think you're all right. So we had a question from John Sue, uh, how do we catch them? Well, we have a 100 foot long beach seine net that we use um, at the beaches. So that is like a very large, if you've never seen a seine net, it's like a large net that kind of makes a wall. Uh, the bottom is lined with lead so it stays on the sand and the top is lined with buoys so that it floats. So it creates kind of a wall and then you walk it out into the beach and you scoop up everything uh, out into the water. Uh, that would get caught in that net. And you catch a lot of fish that way, actually. Uh, Tyler would like to know if they have any predators. Um, yes, they have some predators. There's lots of stuff that's gonna eat a flounder, but their biggest one is obviously gonna be people. People love flounder, and I'm not gonna, not gonna lie, I've had my fair share of flounder filet. Uh, it is very mild, uh, very tasty, but it's not it's not too many predators in the wild except mostly people why are they flat um that's another one that i don't really know i guess just evolutionarily speaking they have become flat that's kind of um like stingrays and skates why they become flat that's just the an adaptation for their environment. As you can see, they like to kind of live along um, sandy substrate. So they're flat so they can kind of blend in and ambush prey as it swims by. Uh, now you can see that they're all kind of hunkered down, nice and full of food and uh, resting on top of each other. If you guys got any more questions, keep them coming. Um, otherwise, I'll just keep looking at the flounder here for a minute. Uh, David, I know you saying uh, you meant other species. Uh, like I said, I I don't we don't have them here with other species. Um, we have them with other species of flounder. Sometimes we'll have winter flounder or even window panes, but um, we've never had them with other species of fish. Now I have seen them at other aquariums with other species of fish uh, in like a big Chesapeake Bay tank with some drum and stuff. And I think as long as they're not gonna get eaten by that fish, then they should get along quite fine. Is there a type of flounder that's more sustainable to buy? Courtney, that's a great question. Uh, I don't know which flounder would be more sustainable and it does change uh, throughout the season. Uh, and it's what's available, but for that I would consult Seafood Watch or any other kind of um, seafood program. Uh, we're a part of Seafood Watch out of Monterey Bay and they're really great about updating uh, seafood sustainability information uh, very regularly. What do they eat? Uh, Diane, well, they eat whatever swims by that they can fit inside their mouth. Uh, generally small fishes, uh, small shrimps, um, your occasional squid or crab, uh, but generally it's going to be whatever fish they can fit inside of their mouth. And they're kind of opportunistic feeders too because there might be times where um, they can't really get food very often so they're gonna, they can actually intake quite a large animal into their stomach. Um, so I'm being asked to explain the eye positioning again. Um, so for those of you who don't know or joined late, the flounder have their both eyes on the same side of their head. Now when they're born as a larval fish, they actually have eyes on both sides of their head uh, looking like a normal fish and then they metamorph to where the eye travels to one side. And then you have your left eye flounder, meaning that all of the, both eyes are on the left side of the body when you hold it up, versus your right eye flounder species, which are the opposite. Um, so I hope that helps. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up here because as you can see, the flounder are hunkering down for the rest of the day. 
Um, so thank you guys for joining us and join us again tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock where we'll be doing some uh, James River activity um, with our sturgeon and striped bass. Um, be sure to visit us virtually with all of our natural education here on Facebook, uh, also Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. And there's always completed and updated information on our website. That's T-H-E-V-L-M dot org. Um, and also, uh, if you guys are out there and willing to help, please consider adopting a wild thing or contributing to our emergency fund or whatever you can do that helps. Um, and for more information on that, go to the VLM.org. And thanks again for joining us. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow.